Apart from mining and crafting, moving items has to be one of the most important aspects of the game of Minecraft. There are so many different ways to move items in Minecraft, whether horizontally or vertically, there are so many different techniques and different designs that we can utilize in our Minecraft worlds, each with their own pros and cons. And in today's video, we're going to be considering many different ways to transport items, all with different purposes in mind. So let's dive right in. To start, items can exist in two forms in the game, as an inventory slot or as a floating item. The hopper will convert floating items to inventory spots, and the dropper will convert inventory spots to floating items. There is a couple more components that can do this exact same thing in the game as well, such as the crafter, and in some cases the dispenser. But only hoppers and hoppers that are located in minecarts can pick up items in their floating form. We will be utilizing both of these forms in all of the designs upcoming in this video, so it's good to be familiar with what they are and how we can convert between one and the other. Before we dive into any of those designs though, it is important to know the two units of speed that we will be talking about in this video, and they are throughput and delay. Essentially, throughput is how many items can transfer per second, and the delay is how long an item takes to reach the beginning to the end. The computer networking industry kind of brought up these two terms as a way to measure the speed and efficiency of information transfer. However, for our purposes, we can kind of think of this as a highway. For example, throughput is the number of cars that can pass a certain point on the highway per hour. So let's say you had a bridge or an overpass of some sort on the highway. The throughput would be the number of cars that could pass over the bridge in any given hour. So if you have a two-lane highway, only two lanes worth of cars are going to be able to pass. But if you had a six-lane highway, then a lot more cars are going to be able to pass. The throughput is going to be a lot higher with a six-lane highway. On the other hand, delay is the time it takes for a single car to travel from point A to point B. In Minecraft terms, it's the time it takes for an item to travel from its source to its destination. And generally, a lower delay is better. So visualizing these two concepts in Minecraft, a hopper line can only have a throughput of one item. It can only allow one item at a time through, whereas an item stream could theoretically push through as many items as you put in it. It has an infinite throughput. But there are pros and cons to both of the designs. For example, the hopper line can only move about two and a half items per second, whereas the water line can move about 6.6 .6 blocks per second. And sometimes you want your items to stay in inventory form, and sometimes you're okay if they drop into floating item form. And there are a couple more creative ways to send items horizontally. For example, you could push it with a slime block across an ice bridge. That moves at about 15 blocks a second at first, and then slows down and stops at about 32 blocks away. So if you need to send your items really fast, about 32 blocks away, this is a great option. Also, for the nether, this is a great option as well because obviously water doesn't exist in the nether, so you'll have to resort to using these kinds of measures to transport bulk items in the nether. This design, again, has a theoretically infinite throughput. You can push as many items as you can fit on the singular block on the ice bridge. So if you're worried about throughput, go with this design. If you're not, the minecart system actually provides a great way to transport items. It has a delay of about eight blocks per second. That's the max minecart speed in Minecraft. And the throughput would be as many items as you can fit in the inventory of the minecart. Something to keep in mind with minecarts, you will probably have to load and unload using standard hoppers. That's the only way to get items in and out of minecarts, so you're restricted to the restraints of standard hoppers. However, hopper minecarts do load at four times hopper speed, which is nice. Now that we've gone over a couple ways to transport items horizontally, let's dive into some vertical transportation. Starting with the downward direction. The easiest way to send items downward is just with a tower of hoppers like so. One interesting thing about hoppers though is that they both push and pull items from the top and bottom respectively. And because of that, your hoppers in the middle can be facing in any direction and items will still make their way all the way to the bottom because the hopper underneath is still pulling the item from above despite the hopper being pointed in a different direction. So if I were to go back to this original design, if I were to put a stack of items in this middle hopper, you will notice that two items at a time are leaving. And that is because the middle hopper is pushing items at the same time as the bottom hopper, this hopper down here, is pulling items. Whenever I have a tall stack of hoppers sending items downwards, I like to alternate every other hopper with a different container block. In this case, I'm using the decorated pot, but any container block will do. And I do this just to regulate that push and pull mechanic that many hoppers stacked on top of each other create. 
Moving on to the next way to send items downwards, and that is, of course, just by using gravity. If we just spit the items into floating item form, they can just fall at their own free will with a max speed of about 40 blocks per second. It does take 33 seconds for them to reach that speed, but even if you don't have 33 seconds of free fall time, it's still pretty fast and extremely reliable, given you have hoppers at the bottom. If you were to send your items into a wall of honey, they fall at a rate of about five blocks per second and will stop if they hit any other full-size blocks because technically honey is a little bit smaller than a full-size block, as you can see here. The hitbox of that smooth stone item is resting right on the corner of that glass block right there. And because of that, the smooth stone item isn't following all the way to the hopper. We would need to replace this with a honey in order for the item to reach all the way to the bottom. And also because a honey isn't a full block, technically you can put it on top of the hopper and the items that fall onto that honey block will be able to be sucked through the block and into the hopper. The same thing goes for mud blocks as well. But if you don't want to use partial blocks, you can also use a full block with a hopper minecart on a rail, and that will be able to suck blocks not only through partial blocks, but also through full blocks as well. Now let's get to upward transportation. This is where things become a little less straightforward, starting with the iconic bubble vader design. Here we have a little smart dropper system for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be changing it just a little bit so that the redstone signal goes around the other way so I can have access right here. As you can see, when I put items into the dropper, the signal goes around and activates it, sp spitting out all its items. With soul sand underneath the water sources, we have a speed of about 11 blocks per second. And if you remove the soul sand, it becomes significantly slower, smoothing out at about two seconds per block. I often use this if I want to kind of see my items moving around. It's much easier to see when they're going that slow. Conversely, putting a magma block at the bottom of a water column will pull the items downward at about five blocks per second. Along those same lines, you can actually spit items through a solid column of blocks that actually don't even need to be in water. As long as they're exactly centered in the block, they should stay within a three by three column of blocks and as you can see, well, it's, maybe it's a little bit unreliable, but as you can see, the blocks are making their way, glitching their way through the column of glass blocks here. This is one of those quirky Minecraft things that's been in the game for ages, and I just had to mention it. Something a little more on the conventional side, we have this observer-based dropper elevator. It's very noisy, so I'm only going to put one item to demonstrate. As you can see with my texture pack, we got a couple redstone signals going up, and that is because we have another smart dropper system. Whenever there's an item in this dropper, this comparator sees that and reads it, and that signal goes around here. This observer detects that change, sending the signal through all of the rest of the observers. The excessive clicking comes from the observers pointed directly into the droppers themselves. If we were to put a block in between them, the observer would be pointed into the block, and this block would power all adjacent redstone components, which in this case is only this dropper right here. So on this design, because it's pointing straight into this dropper, it is powering this one, this one, and this one, causing all the excessive clicking. So whenever I build observer-based dropper elevators, I always lean towards this design because it is a lot quieter at the other one. Well, it has a little bit of clicking at first, but from then on, it is very quiet. Very much unlike this one. Both of these designs have a delay measurement of about 10 blocks per second and a throughput of only one item at a time. And that brings us to my favorite item elevator design in this whole list. It moves items at about 10 blocks per second, is completely silent, and is relatively cheap to build in survival. And best of all, it's easy to understand. Simply all that's going on is whenever there are items in this dropper, this comparator detects that, which turns off this torch. Because there's an item in these two hoppers, when this torch turns off, it starts to bounce back and forth between them. Every time the item is in this hopper, this comparator reads that, sends the signal into this block, which turns off this torch, and sends the signal all the way up the torch tower. And the torch tower is what activates each dropper. Ever since I discovered this design, it has been my absolute favorite, and I've used it everywhere I need items elevated. There are a couple miscellaneous ways to transport items. For example, the allay is a creative way to transport items. It can hold up to a stack of items, whatever item it has in its hand, and will always deliver them straight to the player. 
or whichever player gave it its item in its hand. Or if there's a note block playing nearby, it will deposit the items close to the note block. Another fun way to transport items is with slime blocks like we talked about before, but you can also launch them vertically and all items in their floating form are very bouncy, apparently. And of course, the honorable mention is the Copper Golem, which technically, at the time of this recording, isn't in the official game yet. It's in the betas and it's in the snapshots, but I am very excited to see how the Copper Golem will assist us in moving items from point A to point B. So that should do it for item transportation and elevators in Minecraft. I really hope you learned something new today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.